Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and today we're bringing this old Kurt milling vise back to life. Check it out. All right, so the story behind this one, um, I picked up this and another vice very similar to it. It's a, a Loctite, it's basically a Kurt clone at an auction. I paid $25 for both of them, I think. Um, now, the Loctite one is fine, but this Kurt one, as you'll see, is totally seized. Um, I could just barely, with all my weight, get the screw to turn to move the jaws in and out. Um, aside from that, it's got some rust on it. I want to clean up and I want to get it functioning good. So let's get it taken apart. So the disassembly of these Kurt vices is pretty simple. The movable jaw comes off with just a little set screw and the fixed jaw comes off with two screws on the bottom. There's the D60. That's how I know this is a Kurt vice, even though it doesn't have any other markings on it. The two Allen key bolts on the bottom hold the fixed jaw in place. And there's also a little keyway that keeps it nice and square to the movable jaw. Now the major issue with this vise is that this screw, the Acme screw and the screw box are just totally seized up. They refuse to go together and thread easily. And there's also a thrust bearing that was inside there. You just saw me looking at it with the flashlight that is totally falling apart. You can see all the rollers and stuff in there. So at first I'm just taking the air compressor and some wire brushes, cleaning everything up, this is an older Kurt vise, so it's definitely seen a lot of work, and it's hard to know how well it was maintained, because I don't really know the history of it, but I just want to make sure that everything is nice and functioning before I start to try and use it. Now I decide to grab a socket and put it on the Acme screw just to sort of help work it in and out, thinking that I can just pop through whatever obstruction there is and everything will be fine. But it turns out not to be that easy. All right, so what's happening here is I can't seem to get the lead, the lead screw in past this line that I marked. I can't see anything on the inside of these threads. And since if I can't fix this, this is basically garbage anyway, I'm just gonna blast these threads through with the impact gun and see what happens. Maybe if I round over the end of this, maybe there's a burr or something. So when I was working back over on the bench vise with this, I decided that maybe there was a burr on the end of those threads that was kind of causing this obstruction. Um, I really wasn't making progress and I was using that tape to sort of reference that in and out, but I noticed kind of as I worked into it, I was getting a little bit of progress here and there, moving in very, very slightly with every in and out uh, using oil. I'm actually switching to a thread cutting oil um, and a gel lubricant just to sort of work this thing in and out and push out whatever might be blocking this. So here's what I'm thinking, right? Something clearly is, is jamming up inside, the, uh, inside this, these threads here. Now, the reason that this thread 
is unable to push past it is because it's, it's wedging. Whatever is in there is wedging up against these threads. So what I'm thinking is if I make a couple of small relief cuts in the end of this Acme thread, it'll act as a little carrier and it should be able to push whatever obstruction is in the way out. Uh, now there are some relief cuts. There's a relief cut in the back side of this, which I would assume is kind of for the same thing. So that instead of the threads having nowhere, you know, instead of the obstruction having nowhere to go, it can sit inside that relief cut and then get carried out. I, you know, I don't know, this might be completely the worst thing in the world to do, but you know, at this point I don't really have much to lose. So I'm gonna grab this in the vise, put a relief cut in it and see if it helps. So that relief cut that I put in with the angle grinder is about four threads deep. And I'm hoping, like I said, that it'll just push whatever is in the way um, out of the way. Or even much as act as a tap the way that the flutes on a tap would to sort of reform the threads in this. Now, this screw box is cast iron and the Acme screw itself is hardened steel. So it really should be able to make its way through with enough in and out and enough lubrication. So you'll notice that every time I pull the Acme screw out, I'm cleaning it with the rag. And that's because any of the chips that are on there, I want to evacuate them from the screw box. So I don't want to wind up putting anything back in there that's going to hinder, you know, the threads moving in as I go. Now you can see I'm getting pretty close to that stop that was uh, turned into this shaft. And that's really my goal. I want to give this thing full range of motion. So I just push it just a little bit more and make sure that I can get that. Now by pushing it just that little extra bit, I'm able to assure that I'm getting the full mobility and the full range out of this movable jaw. And I'm really happy that I was able to force this thing in there without doing any significant damage to either the screw box or the Acme screw itself. Both of them look to be in good condition still. Okay, so since I've got that full depth now on this, awesome. The next thing to address is the back of the lead screw. This is all chewed up. I want to get this on the lathe and face that off, make it nice, so that when I put the roller bearing on there, this thing rolls really nicely against the other side of the vise. Over on the lathe, I just take the air compressor and clean off some chips. And then I chuck this thing up in the three jaw. I'm not doing anything crazy here. I'm basically just taking one of these insert cutters and just taking a couple of facing passes off of that turned in stop. I just want to make it nice and smooth and give the thrust bearing that I'm going to put into it later a nice surface to run against. So I, using two different cutters and then a file, I just clean up the part and make it good. Okay, so now that I've got the functionality of the screw and screw box all good, it's time to work on the aesthetic parts of this vise. The paint, the surfaces, get them all smoothed out, get them all nice. Let's go to the sandblaster. So before I actually head over to the sandblaster, I clean everything down with an industrial degreaser, and I'm actually using some gaffer's tape to protect the flat surfaces on the vise base. 
Now, the gaffer's tape is a little thicker than the blue tape, so it'll just help protect against that compressed air and abrasive that's going to be floating around inside the sandblasting cabinet. I also take some time to protect some aspects of the screw box just so that any machine surfaces that look as though they want to be perfectly flat can remain that way and again not get corroded by the abrasive and the high pressure. I take some paper towel and I stuff it inside those threads that I just work so hard to protect and make sure that they don't get damaged by the sand is either. I also am taking a Dremel here and I'm cutting off the little stamp tag on the side of the vise. It really only has a serial number on it. It doesn't have any other markings. Everything else is faded off. So I felt I didn't even really need it. So I ground out those pins and made them disappear. Over at the sandblasting cabinet, I'm going to start with the screw box and I'm basically just trying to get off any residual paint or any loose grease. And what I found is that the sandblaster will actually help absorb any of that loose grease on an old part like this because the sand is just so absorbent. So when you sandblast something and then you clean it with a degreaser, it usually is really, really accepting to new paint. And that's what I'm going for. Now, once I blew everything off, I just quickly went over and primed everything with a clean metal primer from Rust-Oleum. Unfortunately, the clip of me priming the base disappeared, but you can imagine it's basically just me spray painting it on this table. With that stuff drying, I go over to the wire wheel with the handle and I just wire wheel it up just to kind of clean it up, make it look nice. I had ran it lightly through the sandblaster before I hit it on the wire wheel. And then I go over to the big buffer and I buff the ball end to give it a nice chrome look. And I just think it'll be nice to hold on to with it really smooth like that. And the paint's still drying at this point, so I decided to start working on the jaws. I take the fixed jaw and the movable jaw, and I take off the actual jaw parts um, so that I can start resurfacing and dealing with some of the rust on the sides and the bottoms of these parts. Now, you can use a surface grinder to stone these in and make everything perfect, or you could use an India stone or an oil stone, but... I decided to use my granite surface plate and some 600 grit wet dry sandpaper to stone these in and make them smooth. Now, current vices are made to a certain level of precision and I really don't want to mess with that by, you know, fooling around on the surface grinder. I really don't have the experience and I don't really know how to set things to the right tolerance or dress the wheel properly to grind into that precision. So I figured if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, and in this case, these parts were in good enough shape. They just had some corrosion and rust on them. So the 600 grit sandpaper worked really well with uh, conjunction with this big granite plate to get these parts nice and smooth, but also keep them extremely flat. And a good little trick that you'll see me doing here is I actually sprayed the stone down with Windex and then I more or less stick the sandpaper to it. Now the water will actually do a good job sticking the sandpaper down, any sort of liquid on the granite like that. And then the actual jaws, they slide pretty nicely on the sandpaper. You can see how I get that underside ledge as well by hanging it over the edge and just kind of running it back and forth, adding that Windex liberally. You can see how it's a bit of a laborious project. You know, you just have to go back and forth adding Windex and, and making sure that you're actually attacking some of the grit on the sandpaper. But in the end, it left a really nice, smooth result that I was very happy with. And I didn't run the risk of messing up these parts on the surface grinder, which was great for me. Now with those parts done, I can go over and check on the primed base and the primed screw box and head back onto it with some blue spray paint just to match that traditional blue Kurt color. Now this is a 2X paint, again from Rust-Oleum, so it's not exactly the right Kurt color, but it looks pretty nice.
Now with all those parts painted, I can work on some of the decals. I decided I wanted to add some current logoing to the sides of the movable jaw. And since I couldn't find any Kurt stickers online, I just did a quick design in Adobe Illustrator and then cut out a white uh, letters and then a blue background for the side that would fit on the mobile jaw. I'm using a Silhouette Cameo vinyl cutter here. It works great for this application and I really should start using it more. I definitely don't use it enough. So you can see my little background wells that I made with the rounded corners and the two different uh, Kurt cutouts for opposite sides of the movable jaw. Now since these are die cut stickers, I use some transfer paper to properly keep the letters aligned and I stick them to the little blue backgrounds so that when I'm ready, I can stick these directly to that movable jaw and have this thing looking really good. With all those parts done, I can bring them back over to the table and pull off all that gaffer's tape and just make sure that everything that didn't have paint on it when I started still didn't. Um, I can go and also stone in the top of the vice base itself. Now, I move the very heavy granite surface plate over to the metal table because it's a little lower and more sturdy, and I start to slide that vice base upside down on that sandpaper to just smooth it out and make sure everything's nice and flat. Now with the vice base, again, I'm, I'm not trying to regrind anything, just make it smooth. And then I go back in with some scotch Brite. There were some spots that were pretty low that had some corrosion, so the scotch Brite will help get to that. But everything turned out really, really smooth and nice using this big granite surface plate method. Now I can get ready to do the assembly but I run into a little bit of a problem. All right, so I made a mistake. I shouldn't have painted inside here, whatever. Um, and I probably shouldn't have painted on the sides of this. So I'm just gonna go back now with the uh, surface conditioning pad. This is a soft back pad with a surf surface conditioning uh, disc on it. This is from Benchmark Abrasives. Thank you, Benchmark Abrasives. And this will get in there and it'll strip out the paint in there and hopefully not do too much damage to the rest of it. Now I was very careful with this little surface conditioning pad to just grind in on the sides of the vice body and I was able to actually get in there with the offset from the center of the spindle to the edge of that wheel and then similarly I was able to basically strip the paint off the sides of that screw body and it worked out really well. Okay. That worked. Now I'm gonna add a, a new thrust bearing and washers onto the back side of the lead screw. Um, now, I didn't buy the one directly from Kurt just because I wanted to get it uh, sooner and also this was super cheap. This is from McMaster. These are two thrust washers and a thrust bearing. I'll have links to where you can buy these. Um, All together, I think the three parts was like under $10. And now what this is gonna do is it's gonna sit against this on the, on the lead screw here and it's gonna allow me to tighten up the locking ring and still have this actuate really smoothly uh, with all the load being put on this roller bearing. 
with that little piece installed, I can do my final assembly. I'm just checking the functionality of that movable jaw using the drill and then threading on that locking ring. Now the locking ring gets a little set screw and that just sort of dictates where it will land and how much tension there is on that part of the vise. And I just want it to be smooth enough that it runs nicely but not so loose and smooth that it has slop. And overall I was able to achieve that. These two wells on the bottom of the movable jaw were filled with grease when I took it apart. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same. This is some red and tacky grease. And I can also use some grease to stick that half nut washer underneath the uh, wedge section of the movable jaw, which is what gives Kurt their good reputation, is that little wedge system to lock the parts down. I tighten up that set screw just to keep everything in place, and it's looking good. I put a little bit of grease on that keyway and put the other fixed jaw in place using the two screws from the bottom side of the vise. At this point, it's time to put the jaws on. Now, these are some older jaws that I had um, that I got with the Kurt vices when I bought them at the auction. They're not in the greatest condition, but I did order some new ones from Kurt directly, and they should be here any day, and I'm looking forward to switching those out. Now I'm just cleaning the sides of that movable jaw so I can apply the little decals that I made. And you can see they look really nice with the blue background and the white letters. Making sure everything's free of dirt and oil before I stick these on so they actually stay in place. Overall this project came out super nice. I'm really happy with the functionality of the vise. It's super smooth and it's going to be in service for a really long time. All right, that about does it for this video. I really enjoyed this little restoration and it was pretty straightforward with the exception of that screw box. Now I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of comments in the section on this video just tearing me apart about how it wasn't the right thing to do and yada, yada, yada. At the end of the day, it worked really well. The vise is functioning super well, super smooth. Everything is nice and tight and that's what I was going for. I wanted to bring this thing back into service because when I started, this was more or less scrap. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you have questions and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. If you want behind the scenes looks at what I'm doing in the shop on a day-to-day -day basis, follow me on Instagram at Make Everything Shop. I post every day and I post stories and behind the scenes stuff from what I'm doing and also what my friends shops and what they've got going on when I go and visit them and go on tool picking fiascos and buying stuff from auctions and all that stuff. I want to say thank you to Benchmark Abrasives for supplying abrasives for my shop, like that surface conditioning wheel. There are links down below that you can check out that run through me as an affiliate, and it helps me keep the lights on and all that stuff. So again, fun little project. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks.